That continuation of last week's Bakuaka y'all wanted is at the end. The challenge. End a call to your crush with love you. Sakuatsu. Sakusa could hear something rustle on the other side of the phone. We really don't need to do this every time, you know. But it's tradition, Omi Omi. Besides, who else is gonna look at volleyball monthly with me? Let's see, your brother, Eren, Kitter, son. Oh my god, do you see a Shijima's arms in this thing? Atsumu groaned. I just hate him so much that I love him, you know? No, I do not know, actually, because I have a healthy relationship with my idols. Yeah well some of us are a little more dysfunctional than you. Yeah. okay. Um, oh my god. Page 8. Page 8. Page 8. Go to page 8 right now, Omi. Are you on it yet? Sakusa sighed, flipping through the magazine. Yes, I'm there. Do you see Bakuto, Omi? Do you see? Bakuto. Kautara. Are you looking at this? Sakusa squinted at the picture of the spiker jumping. He should really take that awful gel out of his hair. Objectively, yes. But like, also, in a Bakuto way, it's kind of... Mia. No. I only mean... I am going to stop you before you say something that makes me lose all faith in humanity. Good night, Mia. Just hear me. Love you. Bye. You're what now? Sakusa went still, holding his breath as he waited for Atsumu to respond. Oh my god. Omi. Sakusa had to jerk his head back from the phone when a howling laugh suddenly jumped through the receiver. You're really just. Oh my god. Why are you laughing? You know, people try to tell me you don't have a sense of humor, but oh my god. Omi kun. Atsumu broke out into a fresh round of laughter, and Sakusa furrowed his eyebrows. What makes you think I'm joking? Well of course you're joking, Omi Omi. What, did you really think I'd buy that year? Oh my god. Sakusa frowned as Atsumu continued to cackle into the phone. Okay first of all, screw you. Second of all, I wasn't just kidding. And third of all, you love Bakuto Kautarao's hair, so again. Screw you, you don't get to talk. I what? Atsumu's laugh slowly died out on the other end of the line. Yeah. That wasn't a joke. Sakusa closed his eyes, swallowing. Screw you, Mia. No wait, Omi, I'm just... Really? You do? Oh look, my friend is trying to call. You don't have any other friends, Omi. The spiker frowned. Well gee, thanks a lot, Mia. I'm really glad I confess to you now. Wait, so that was a confession? Sakusa breathed out heavily. It was supposed to just be a challenge, but then you were being obnoxious, so... So you told me you love me because I was being obnoxious? Okay I'm hanging up now. Wait, but I didn't get the chance to respond yet. I do not need to hear your... But you'll like it, Omi. Sakusa went still. I will? Yes, you will. Promise. Okay. Atsumu paused, sucking in a deep breath. Look, I was going to say me too, but then I remembered that I'm saving myself for a Shijima's arms, so... Sakusa frowned, pulling the phone away from his ear. Screw you, Mia. Wait, Omi, I'm being serious though, I do actually. Sakusa hung up before letting his phone drop down to his side so that he could cover his face with the palms of his hands. God. Why is he my type? Daisuga. Daichi let out a loud breath on the other end of the line. I don't even want to know how Tanaka got Suna's number. I think Suna got his, actually. Oh god. The captain groaned, and Sugar laughed a little. Arsenry. That's my only prediction. There's going to be a fire, and it's going to be intentional. Oh god. Don't worry, Daichi. Just try not to think about it, okay? You need some rest. Yeah. That's probably smart. Daichi breathed out against the phone, and the tips of Suga's lips turned upwards in a small smile. 
Good night, sugar. Night, Daichi. Sleep well. The setter paused, biting his bottom lip. Love you. For goodness sake. You too? What? Sugar froze as he listened to something rustle on the other end of the line. Look, it's okay. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Hinata just made the same slip up the other day, actually. He did what now? Daichi exhaled out loudly. Listen, I get it. You all mix me up with your dads or something, and it's fine. I know mistakes. Oh my god. Sugar squeezed his eyes shut tightly. No, Daichi, I do not. Oh my god no. That's not what I oh lord. It's alright. Everybody else has already. I don't think of you as my dad, okay? Like, I really don't. Not as a father, you have never been oh my god. Really? Daichi paused. You don't? No. Of course not. The opposite. Literally the absolute opposite. Alright. The opposite? Yes. Completely other side of the spectrum. It was quiet on the other end of the line for a long moment. So, you think of me as your son then? Suga's eyes shot open. What? No. Oh my god. Okay. Um. Forget I said anything. I mean, for the record, I don't think of you as a father, or as a son, so. It is not a good sign that you felt you had to clarify that, Daichi. Sugar took a deep, steadying breath. Just this conversation never happened, alright? Okay, uh, yeah, sure. Great. Um, alright. Good night, Daichi. Night. Okay, bye. Quickly hanging up, Sugar threw his phone onto the other side of the mattress, shoving his face into his hands. Oh god. Asanoa. Asahi's eyes widened when Nishinoya accepted his video call. Did I, uh, call at a bad time? No, no. The libero's shirt lowered towards the camera, his face still out of view. You can count my push-ups. Um. Maybe I should call back. What? Why? Is this, uh, is this not? Asahi's forehead creased. Like, a bit uncomfortable for you? Nishinoya's shirt lowered towards the camera once again. No, why would it be? Because? I. You know what? I'll just call back later. Or, Asahi. Bye, Noah. Asahi paused, swallowing hard. Love you. Asahi. Nishinoya scrambled for the camera, bringing it up to show his grinning face. Do you mean it? Uh. Asahi blushed as he looked at the wide smile that had spread across Nishinoya's face. Yeah, uh, yeah. I do. Or, oh, Asahi, I love you too, big man. The ace's eyes widen. You do? Yes. So much. The libero's eyes somehow managed to grow even brighter. You are literally the best best friend a best friend could ask for, after all. Asahi froze. Oh. Seriously, I cannot think of any friend who could possibly be a better friend than... It's okay, Noah, you don't have to tell me. No, Asahi, you need to hear this. Because you, my friend, can best friend as a verb like no other best. I really do not need to hear. I love you, my dude, because your friendship. Noah. I hope we stay best friends forever, and I hope that never changes, never ever ev. Asahi screwed his eyes shut, his cheeks flushed red. I didn't mean it platonically, okay? Noya paused, narrowing his eyes slightly. You didn't? The ace took a deep breath. No, um, I didn't. So I really do not need to hear you friend zone. Asahi. Nishinoya's face disappeared from the screen, but Asahi could hear the quick thud of footsteps on the other end of the call. Noah, are you running? I saw ye. Suddenly the younger student's face popped back onto the screen, his grin so wide Asahi worried it was about to split his face in half. This is awesome. Literally so, so awesome. It is? Yes. Now we can be boyfriends who? Boyfriends? Boyfriends. Boyfriends who count each other's push-ups. 
Is that really a necessary part of? And I can cabin you. Nishinoya's smile widened. Oh my god, I'm so going to cabin you, Asahi. The ace, meanwhile, only blinked at him, his forehead creasing. How would that, uh, war? But he was cut off by a loud, extended squeal coming from the other end of the line, the camera quickly moving up and down as Nishinoya began to hop. Boyfriends, Asahi. Boyfriends. The tips of Asahi's lips turned upwards as Nishinoya's words began to actually sink in. Boyfriends? Boyfriends. Oh. Okay then. Asahi smiled, his cheeks pink. Boyfriends. Kayahaba. Kayatani's voice was little over a grumble as he muttered into the phone. Cat people are stupid. Hey. I'm a cat person. The spiker fell silent for a long moment. Oh. Yahaba waited, arching an eyebrow. After another pause, Kayatani cleared his throat. So. Anything you want to take back now? No. Nothing. Nothing. Yahaba let out a huff. I'm going to hang up on you then. Fine. Fine. Whatever. Love you. The other end of the call was silent for a long moment, and Yahaba waited, holding his breath. But then the line beeped dead, and Yahaba yanked the phone back from his ear to stare at the screen. That son of a gun. Scowling, he quickly dialed back, pulling the phone up to his ear once more. Hello? You did not just seriously hang up on me. I don't appreciate getting pranked. That wasn't a prank, you jerk. Kayatani went silent. Oh. Uh, yeah, oh. Uh. He paused, cocking an eyebrow. Well, is there anything you want to say? Yahaba waited, but the other end of the line remained silent. Kayatani? Still no reply. Pulling back, Yahaba checked the screen to see that Kayatani had already ended the call. That. His scowl deepening, Yahaba was just about to call back when his phone dinged with a private message notification. K. Okay. Yahaba stared at the text, waiting for Kayatani to add something. The three hopping dots didn't appear, however, and so after a long moment, Yahaba furrowed his eyebrows and started to type out a reply. What the hell is that supposed to mean? The typing dots appeared, and then stopped. Then reappeared, and then stopped. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, a new text popped up. Me too. What? This message could not be delivered. Kayatani. This message could not be delivered. You better not have blocked me. This message could not be delivered. Do not think the whole love thing is going to stop me from killing you. This message could not be delivered. Kayatani I swear to god you are dead. This message could not be delivered. Simishira. Shirabu furrowed his eyebrows at Semi's face on the other side of the FaceTime screen. You're falling asleep. What? No I'm not. I can literally see your eyelids drooping. Hey. Semi glanced up from his homework to shoot a withering look at Shirabu through the screen. Don't talk back to your upperclassmen. I'm just saying. If you're tired, you should hang up. Get back to your studying, Shirabu. The second year fell silent as Semi turned back to his paper, but Shirabu's eyes never left the older student's face. You should go to bed. I'm doing my work. Your work is going to be bad if you're tired. I'm not tired, and my work is absolutely. You've been stuck on the same problem for the past 10 minutes. Semi's face flushed pink as he snapped his head up to glare at the younger setter. You shouldn't be watching me. You were the one to video call me, Semi-san. Oh my god, will you just? Semi huffed out loudly, his pixelated cheeks red as he ref accused back on his paper. Look, I'm not going to fall asleep, and I'm not going to hang up, so just do your own damn homework, alright? Shirabu narrowed his eyes, considering. Fine. Turning back to his own work, he picked up his pencil and began to write. After a couple of minutes, however, he could hear a noise coming from the other end of the line, 
and Shirabu glanced up to see Semi's eyes closed against the desk, his snore soft. God. Shaking his head, Shirabu set down his pencil to study Semi's peaceful face through the screen. Then, keeping his voice quiet, Shirabu let the corners of his lips relax from their previous frown. Love you, Semi-san. MMM. Shirabu froze as the older setter shifted in his position, the first year not daring to move. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Semi mumbled something again. Brat. Shirabu's shoulders relaxed. So he was just sleep talking. Reaching his hand forward, Shirabu's index finger hovered over the end call button for a long moment. After looking at Semi's sleeping face, however, he frowned, pulling back his hand. Whatever. And so Shirabu picked up his pencil once more, turning back to his homework as he listened to Semi's gentle snores. Yakulev. This was a bad idea. This was a bad idea, and a bad challenge, and he couldn't risk. Yaku-san? Are you listening? The libero blinked, shaking himself out of his reverie. Oh, yeah. I'm listening, Lev. Really? Because you sound a little distracted. Is everything okay? Everything is fine. Are you sure? I'm sure. Because I think. Lev. I just. Okay I'm hanging up now. Wait, I'm sorry, Yaku-san. Please don't. The libero screwed his eyes shut tightly. This was a bad idea. Bye. This was a bad idea, and a bad challenge, and he couldn't risk. Love you. Well crap. Yaku waited, biting his lip. Oh my god. Lev's voice started off slow. Oh my god, I knew it would oh my god. Was it the food feeding or the complimenting? Yaku's eyes snapped open, his forehead creasing. What? See, Kiru-san said that the food feeding would work, but I thought that complimenting you a lot was the best strat. Kiru? But, I mean, if you like them both, then I'd be totally happy to continue. Lev, what are you talking about? Well the plan, Yaku-san, the plan to get you to love me. There. Yaku turned pink. There was a plan? Yeah, of course. Okay, so I made two possible outlines for the first date, but would you prefer planetarium or movie theater or... Yaku closed his eyes. Oh god. This really had been a bad idea. I was thinking. It was a challenge, Lev. The younger student paused. What? I was supposed to end the call with love you for a challenge. The other end of the line went silent. Oh. Yeah. Yaku bit his lip, and after a long pause, he could hear some shuffling on the other side of the call. Sorry, Yaku-san. Um, I guess I should. It was neither. Huh? The libero took a deep breath, his face beat red. It wasn't the complimenting or the food feeding, it was. I don't even know. Wait. Lev's voice grew more excited. Does that mean? And I prefer planetarium. Never take me to a movie theater, ever. Hold up. They are gross and I hate the smell of popcorn, so. Are you saying you? Bye, Lev. But. Yaku quickly hung up the phone so that he could bury his crimson face into the palms of his hands, groaning. That was such a bad idea. Oh my god. Bakuaka. I was getting a lot of requests to continue the Bokuaka from last week's video so you might wanna go watch that and then come back. Akashi shot a look over at Bakuto as they left the computer repair store. I can hold the phone, you know. You don't have to keep carrying it. Bakuto, however, didn't hand the device over, only smiling at Akashi sheepishly. Sorry, Kashi, but I don't think you can be trusted. I'm fine now, really. I won't drop it. You sure? Yes, Bakuto-san. Okay. The spiker leaned in towards him. Love you. Akashi stumbled over his feet, his eyes going wide. Bakuto, meanwhile, just shook his head as he continued on walking with the setter's new phone in hand. Yeah. You definitely still can't be trusted. 
I. Bakuto-san. Yeah, Kashi. Bakuto paused to turn around towards the setter, who had gone frozen with his feet rooted to the floor and his gaze focused on the spiker. What is it? Akashi's forehead creased. Why do you keep on saying that? Saying what? The whole. Love you? Akashi swallowed. Yes. That. Bakuto tilted his head. Well which time do you mean? All of them. Literally all of them. Okay well the first time it was a challenge. Akashi let out a breath. Oh. And then the second time was because I thought you'd misheard me. The third time it was just cause I love you. And that last one was because. What? Akashi went completely still. His eyes just fixed on Bakuto's. The spiker's eyebrows furrowed, and he took a hesitant step towards the setter. Hey, Kashi, are you okay? You don't look so good. What did you just say? Oh, just that you don't look so good. Your face is kind of doing this whole paling thing, and... No, but Kuto-san, what did you say before that? I asked if you're okay. Seriously though, your skin is a little... Before that, but Kuto-san... What did you say before that? Bakuto's forehead creased as he tilted his head. Do you need a chair, Akashi? You look like you need to sit down. I. Akashi just stared at him. I love you too. Well yeah, but like seriously, you don't look like you should be standing. Here. Akashi watched with wide eyes as Bakuto wrapped his arm around the setter's side to help him towards a bench. But you. Are you not surprised? About what? I just. That was a confession, Bakuto-san. Okay. Bakuto gently let Akashi down onto the bench, the setter continuing to just stare up at him. Bakuto-san. I just confess to you. That you what? Love me? I. Yes. I just. Yes, Bakuto-san. Yes. Oh, well of course you do, Kashi. Bakuto kneeled down in front of where Akashi sat on the bench, shooting the setter a smile as he held out his phone towards him. You love me because I'm awesome, just like how I love you because you're awesome. Do you want your phone back now? Akashi simply blinked down at Bakuto's bright expression in silence. Then, after a long moment, he finally let out a little exhale. I think it'd be wiser for you to hang on to it, Bakuto-san. Okay. Kashi. Tucking the device into his pocket, Bakuto plopped himself down onto the bench beside the setter, grinning. The bench was a good idea, right? Akashi took a deep breath and closed his eyes. Yes, Bakuto-san. The bench was definitely a good idea. The End